Om Shanti. Good morning, everyone. So I'm going to get the Muldi up. All right. So we are listening to the Murli of 26th of December, 1979. So Baba wants us to be aware of the three dots, the three tilaks, or one tilak which has three dots. And these are the three dots of awareness of who we are, who Baba is, and what this drama is all about. So Baba is a point, we are points, and drama is a point, in other words, putting a full stop to what has happened. Past is past. And when we do this, then we become embodiments of success through the, the power that we receive by us holding the awareness that I am a soul, Baba is the Supreme Soul, and this drama is a point as well. So Baba is, is wanting us to become victorious. Now, this the final step of this is that eventually in the golden age, we will have the tilak of sovereignty of the world will become world emperors. So self-sovereignty at this time will lead to world sovereignty in the future. And when we talk about world sovereignty, Baba is reminding us that it is actually sovereignty over everything, the five elements, but also the five vices. So conquering Maya will help us conquer the world. So how do we conquer the five vices? And what Baba is saying that when we conquer these five vices, we shouldn't make them our prisoners because prisoners can sometimes, you know, revolt against the king, revolt against us. So Baba is saying that rather than prisoners, make them into your cooperative elements. That is, you know, your companions, if you will. But how do we make the five vices, which are lust, anger, greed, attachment, and ego, into our companions? So Baba is explaining that we have to transform their form, uh, transform them into something meaningful so that they can become our companions and help us, cooperate with us so that we can become successful. So let's listen to the Murli. To be a Rajyogi means to be one who is an embodiment of awareness of three things. So today, Bab Dada is seeing the children who are wearing a tilak. Each one's forehead has the tilak of a Rajyogi, that is, the tilak of one who is at present an embodiment of remembrance, as well as the tilak of one who has the right to the kingdom of the world. Each one's forehead has the tilak of a Rajyogi. So we are Rajyogis at this time. We have this tilak. That is the tilak of one who is at present, at this present time in the conference age, an embodiment of remembrance. As well as, uh, so that, what will it uh, eventually transform into? What will it result into? That 
we will have the tilak of one who has the right to the kingdom of the world. He's seeing both the tilaks. And actually, many times, what I was saying earlier, Baba talks about a third tilak that happens in between the tilak of awareness and the tilak of world sovereignty. And that's the tilak of victory. So, tilak of awareness leads to a tilak of victory, that is success, and eventually will become the world emperors and will receive the tilak for that too. So he is seeing both the tilaks. All of you always see both your tilaks. Babda is especially seeing the speciality of the Rajyoki tilak on each one's forehead. Whilst seeing the speciality, what difference did he notice? He noted that some Rajyogis have a tilak of three dots on their foreheads. Others have a tilak of only two dots on their foreheads. And others have a tilak of only a single dot. So let's take a moment to see not one, not two, but all the three dots on our foreheads. In fact, the knowledgeful father has given all of you the triple, triple tilak of three dots. The tilak of the awareness of three different things. Your awareness of these three things has been portrayed in your memorial in the form of a trident, a tissue. Yeah, trident is a weapon. And it has been shown that many of these gods and goddesses, uh, the deities that we know of, would have that trident in their hands and they would use that to kill the demons. So we have to use the trident of the awareness, the triple awareness, and that will make us victorious over our own inner demons. So the three different types of awareness are the three tilaks or three dots in the tilak, the awareness of the self, the awareness of the father, and the awareness of the knowledge of the drama. The awareness of the self, the awareness of the father, and the awareness of the knowledge of the drama. The expansion of the whole knowledge is merged in the awareness of these three. The awareness of these three is the tree of knowledge. And now Baba has a wonderful analogy for these three aspects, three awarenesses. First, there's the seed of the tree. Yeah, I When I was reading it, I thought the seed of the tree would be awareness that I am a soul. But actually, Baba is saying something different. Uh, so then two leaves emerge from that seed and then the tree continues to grow. So in the same way, the first and main thing is the awareness of the father, the seed. Then there are the two leaves. They are the special awareness of the full knowledge of the soul and also the clear knowledge of the drama. Those who remain constantly aware of these three receive the blessings of being a constant embodiment of remembrance. On the basis of your awareness of these three, you can defeat Maya and thereby conquer the world. The conference age is a special time for having the awareness of these three things. The Raj Yogi Tilak is sparkling on the forehead of each of you in the form of three dots. To represent your awareness of these three things, if one prong of a trident is broken, that weapon cannot be accurate. So we have to be careful that not even one of these three dots disappear. 
all three dots are constantly there. In that way, the trident would be complete, the weapon would be complete, and therefore it would be effective in destroying and killing the demons that we have within ourselves. The three dots. I am a soul, point. Shiv Baba is a soul, supreme soul, point. And the awareness of the trapper, point. The tree of knowledge. The seed is the father. And the two leaves that emerge. First is the awareness of the self. I am a soul. Then the awareness of the knowledge of the psyche. A completely victorious soul. You see. So. Tilak of awareness leads to. A tilak of victory. You become victorious. A completely victorious soul is seen to be an embodiment of the awareness of these three things. That is the three dots. However, what happens is that there's a difference in how clearly you maintain your awareness of the three things at the same time. It's all up to us. How clearly we maintain the awareness of these three dots. These three aspects. These three prongs of the trident. Sometimes you forget to remain aware of one thing. Sometimes two. And sometimes you even forget all three. This is why Baba said that he saw one who only had a double tilak of two dots. And others who only had a single tilak of one dot. Baba also noticed many very good children who remain constantly aware of all three. They are the ones whose tilaks cannot be rubbed off by anyone. Yeah, so these have been drawn with indelible ink. Yeah. Nothing can erase these three dots. They are the ones whose tilaks cannot be rubbed off by anyone. When you become an embodiment of remembrance, you become one with an imperishable tilak. Otherwise, you repeatedly have to apply a tilak on yourself. You apply the tilak, but it is rubbed off the next minute, and you have to put it on again. Okay. Yeah, so those permanent markers, you can use those permanent markers. However, the tilaks worn by the Raj yogis of the conference age has to be always imperishable. Not that we have to keep applying every day, every so often. Maya cannot make the imperishable perishable. Every morning at Amrit Villa, check whether the tilak of the awareness of all three that you have put on is imperishable. Maya will not then have the courage throughout the whole day. One second. Baba is saying to be an embodiment of the awareness of all three means to be an embodiment of all power. This tilak is power. Your form of power will destroy any wasteful form of maya that comes in front of you. Then the five forms of maya will become the five servants. The transformed form will be visible. You understand? If we simply have these three tilaks as imperishable marks on our forehead, written with indelible or created with indelible ink, that's the definition of a true Raj Yogi. That's what Baba is saying. Awareness of the self and the soul, Baba is point, I is a point, Baba is a point, and Rama is a dot point. 
and we become powerful. And what happens with the power that we receive? What happens when we become super powerful, ever powerful? That we are able to transform Maya such that it actually becomes our servant. So all the five vices become five servants for us. And here Baba is explaining how that will happen. The vice of lust will change into the form of good wishes. And this is how the, the vice of lust will cooperate with you in your good wishes. Those who influence you with lust will change into world servers who have good wishes for you. So your energy of lust will change into good wishes and will help us. Others' vice of lust will also change into good wishes and they'll become world servers too. Instead of being your enemies, they will become your friends. Right? So lust. Now fire of anger. Fire of anger which is at present burning all your godly wealth. There's this saying in India, right? That the even the pots, the earthenware pots filled with water um, get dried off. Right? When all the water in it gets evaporated if there's someone living in the house who has anger. So anger can be so destructive. So the fire of anger, which is at present burning all your godly wealth and making you unconscious with all its strength, will transform into spiritual strength and intoxication and revive those who have become unconscious. What will it transform into? Spiritual strength and intoxication. Yes, so lust will change into good wishes. Anger will change into spiritual strength and intoxication. Yeah, lust into go good wishes. See, your lust getting transformed into good wishes for everyone. And your anger getting transformed into spiritual strength and intoxication. The vice of anger will transform into the power of tolerance and become a weapon for you. When anger is transformed into a weapon for the power of tolerance, that weapon constantly serves whoever holds it. Yeah, from becoming a destructive weapon Anger, when it is transformed into tolerance, when it is transformed into spiritual strength and spiritual intoxication, then it serves us. The fire of anger will transform into the fire of yoga. It will not burn you, but it will incinerate your sins. So let's take a moment to see our sins getting incinerated in this fire of yoga, which is really the fire of tra anger transformed. And how has it been transformed? Through those three dots, the tilak that we have put on our forehead with indelible ink, imperishable mark that has been created by the three dots. See, the power that is getting created because of that is causing anger to transform into yoga. So the fire of anger, which would destroy everything earlier, now this fire of anger is getting transformed into the fire of yoga. And it is incinerating all our sins. See that happening right now. So on one hand, your lust is getting transformed into good wishes. On the other hand, your anger is getting transformed into spiritual strength, spiritual intoxication, tolerance, fire of you.
Now let's go to the third vice. In the same way, the vice of greed will transform into the attitude of a trustee, of one who is free from any temptation and one who is completely beyond upram and has an attitude of unlimited disinterest. Behat kameraki. So trusty, upram, behat kameraki. No temptation. Let's see how sense is that. Nothing belongs to us. Nothing is pulling us towards itself. No desires whatsoever. No temptations. Floating freely high up above. Total disinterest. All greed will have vanished so that instead of constantly saying, I want this, I want this, you will become completely ignorant of all desires. You would not have the greed to say, I want this. Yeah, now Baba is creating fun here. Chaiye, I want this. Chaiye. But instead you would say, go away. Chaiye. Yeah, so go away to all the desires. You shoo away all the desires. Go, go, go. I don't want you. I don't need anything. And so all the desires go away. All your taking will transform into constantly giving. Taking, wanting. Can you do this for me? Can you help me here? No. You're giving, giving, giving. Greed will transform into an attitude free from all temptation. You will become an embodiment of the awareness of a bestower and constantly bestow on others. Yeah, so going back to the vice of lust, that will be transformed into Yeah, what will happen to the vice of lust? Yeah, good wishes, right? And then the vice of lust, pardon me, vice of anger. What will happen to that? Spiritual strength and intoxication. Spiritual strength and intoxication. It will become a fire of yoga, a fire of anger, which burns away everything. It will become the fire of yoga, which will burn away all our sins. And there was something else there. Hmm? Tolerance. Power of tolerance. Power of tolerance. So, yeah, it will become the spiritual strength and intoxication. It will become the power of tolerance. It will also become the fire. The fire of yoga will transform into the fire of yoga and burn away all of our sins. And then there was the vice of greed. So there won't be any greed. What will it transform into? We become trustees. Trust. Right. We become free from all temptations, unlimited disinterests, and rising up above, completely beyond of Ram. No chaye and only jaye. All the desires will go away. They'll become ignorant of desires. We won't want anything. Wanting will turn into giving will always be bestowing upon others. They'll become constant bestowers. Right now, Baba talks about similarly, the vice of attachment will no longer attack you. Attachment will transform into love and become your special companion to help you remember Baba and do service. 
love will become a special means to bring about success in remembrance and service. In the same way, body conscious vice of ego will transform into self-respect. Yes, so attachment will turn into love and ego will transform into self-respect. Self-respect is a way to make your state ascend, whereas body consciousness is instrumental in making your stage descend. Your body consciousness will transform into self-respect and become the means for you to remain an embodiment of remembrance. Yes, attachment will transform into love and body consciousness or ego will transform into self-respect. So let's take a pause for a minute and let's see all of these vices transforming themselves. And as they are transforming themselves, they're becoming our companions and cooperative elements so that we can then reach our perfection. Right. One second. All right. So Baba is saying, similarly, all the wise, in other words, everything in its fierce form will transform into the form of all the elevated powers and will cooperate with you in service. Do you experience this power to transform everything within yourself? You can transform all five on the basis of this, the awareness of the three things. Right? A point, Baba, a point, and drama. Anything that comes to you in the form of lust should transform into good wishes. Only then will you receive the title of a conqueror of Maya and thus conquer the world. A victorious soul would definitely change the form of his enemy. A defeated king would become an ordinary subject. Only then would their conquering king be called victorious. Only when an advisor becomes one of your ordinary subjects would you be called victorious. There's a law that when you defeat someone, you take that person prisoner. You make that one your slave. Or when you conquer the five vices, you don't have to make them your prisoners. If you made them your prisoners, they would then erupt inside. You know, sometimes um, a mutiny can be created, you know, revolt can happen. And you know, sometimes they erupt unnecessarily. So instead, you must transform them and make them cooperate with you. And they will then constantly salute you. Before you bring about world transformation, let there be self-transformation. Through your self-transformation, world transformation will become easy. Constantly keep the power of transformation with you. The power of transformation is very important. Baba will tell you later how you should use the power of transformation from Amrit Vela to night time. All right, later Baba is going to talk about that. So anyways, now we have the salutations to such Raj Yogi souls. Right? Raj Yogi souls are those who have the 
three dots, the tilak of three dots. So who have the tilak of the present time and the prohib? Tilak of their future royalty to those who constantly maintain the awareness of the three things and thereby remain powerful. Yeah, and because of being powerful, then they're able to transform Maya with its fierce forms that it's, it has into yeah, those who cooperate with us in service. So to those who transform Maya with their elevated power and make her cooperate, to those who are conquerors of Maya and thus conquer the world, Maya Jeet to Jagat Jeet, to those who have made all the powers their weapons and constantly have those weapons in their grasp, to those, to such Elevated souls, Bhapta, that's love, remembrance, and namaste. We, spiritual children, say namaste to the spiritual father. Yes, Om Shanti. Well, powerful Murli. I think we can stop here and the rest of the Murli can be taken up tomorrow. I think our plate is full with lots of wonderful things to, to relish, to enjoy, to churn eventually. Today in the Sakar Murli, which would be yesterday for you, Baba was talking a lot about how we have to churn the ocean of knowledge. We have to inspire others to churn the ocean of knowledge too. And then we come together and discuss and that way we can come up with new answers, new ways, new techniques of uh, explaining to others. I was sharing that in the Murdi that, you know, there is learning, but then there is learning about learning or learning how to learn. Yeah. And so in, in the West now, there's uh, a whole study of that, you know, study of how to learn. So how, to learn how to learn. Only when we learn how to learn can we actually teach others, right? So the learning about learning and the learning about teaching, this is called as pedagogy. There's a name to it. When a lot of research is happening in the U.S. on how to learn how to learn. Yes, and therefore how to learn, how to teach. So that's what Baba is teaching here to all these wonderful things uh, which we have to teach ourselves. But how do we teach this to ourselves? How do we learn how to learn new things? We have enough time. If we we all want to say something, you're welcome to. Or we could go into meditation and uh, we can even end earlier today. If you want to share something, you're welcome to. Lucky Ben. We can you talk about sharing before we move on to meditation. So if anybody wishes to share, we can take a few sharings. You got it. Yeah, so actually, uh, you know, I was just wondering about Baba says these three thoughts are so powerful. I mean, so many things, almost everything can be achieved for the spiritual life that we aim to. So I'm wondering on the practical application of it. Like uh, when we are sitting in Amrit Vela Yoga, then we first come in the soul consciousness and then we go to Paramdham, and then we are combined with Baba. And then we go into the deep silence. We have put a full stop almost to all the thoughts also of the past, future, present, which is the drama. So is it that stage that Baba is saying three dots, being aware? And also we are aware. We are not doing this in 
dream state or you know in sleep state so my question is i mean we are doing this when we are in meditation but how to constantly you know be in that awareness i mean has somebody experimented with this uh, because transformation happens when we are in yoga and all these voices baba is transforming baba is healing into positive qualities this that is what is my understanding from the whole murli about the three dots i mm. want to understand yeah is it something else is it something more and how do we remain in that three dot through the day right there will always be more by the way you know but what baba has to offer to us there will always be more but every day we are getting more and more understanding of all this see it's a 24 hour yoga what we are doing is eventually learning the art of karma yoga that every moment every second we have to be aware of what we are thinking what we're doing in fact we have to be aware of our awareness to uh, aware we have to think what we are thinking you know in the west there is another term that they using that is called as metacognition yeah to to perceive to to think to perceive you know is cognition but to be aware of what you are aware of to think what you are thinking you see that is metacognition what i was sharing earlier the pedagogy you know there's another term that they using in the west called as meta learning meta learning so what does that mean like meta cognition meta learning learning how to learn so the awareness of awareness that every moment what are you aware of we need to be aware of that too so go deeper every moment as you're chopping vegetables what is your awareness check what is your awareness what awareness you should be having so become aware of what your awareness is so that you can change your awareness to what it needs to be if it's not right every moment chopping vegetables oh, i am in soul conscious state i am a soul i am a soul check that how do you know that i was just chopping vegetables <laughs> <laughs> i don't know baba probably i don't know baba is telling that okay thank you brother that was quite helpful i come from the pedagogy world so i could certainly i mean i mean the international association of facilitators and quite uh, working a lot with the people in the west so i understand what you mean and we call yes. even meta yeah so meta awareness meta cognition that was a term that really touched me to use it throughout the day thank you right you know there is this um, i'm digressing away from early but just a little bit but you know the first sentence that uh, or the very important sentence that was spoken by uh, uh rene descartes you know is is a very short phrase that he used he said cogito ergo sum i think therefore i am so cogito that's how the word cognition has come i think thinking so i think cogito ergo sum so ergo i am therefore a sum so i think therefore i am so we we think that's great we all think but are we aware of what we are thinking are we thinking about what we are thinking this is the next level of of purushad that needs to happen you see i'm thinking about baba now i need to think about whether i'm thinking about baba or not <laughs> layers of thinking it's interesting yes and... it's true that we will be thinking of something because even if we experiment for now for a minute that we just put a full stop let's do that like for 30 seconds and i'll share we'll all share Sure. Yeah. Good.
So what's your experience with the breath? Were you breathing when you had a full stop? No thought. There could be. There could be. Of course, we're breathing. But am I aware of the breathing? I wasn't aware of the breathing. I was into the dots. Yeah. So when actually thoughts are the electric pulse, we are breathing only when we are thinking. You said that, you know, uh, I am because I am thinking. So there will be thoughts. We can't do that for no time. But being aware of what we are thinking and having that single thought. So thank you so much. Put a full stop. Good, 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 actually. Good. Someone else has mentioned Raj Yogi Imperishable Tilak. Om Shanti, brother. Whenever this Teen Tilak comes, you know, I love to hear that song, Teen Tilak Mat Bisro, because I find everything, whatever method Baba has given, when, especially when he said Bhiti baat ko yaad na karo. and there are so many kind of small small action plans in that song and where every bindi the singer takes us across I, I really like that but today I found two new things in the Murli see generally we say I am a soul I am a point father is a point Rama is a point but in para to Baba says first think of father the seed then two leaves emerge, which is the soul and drama. So I was thinking this is a new way for me to really put the tilak. Uh, I just took that, uh, okay, let me, instead of saying I am a point, which sometimes becomes very difficult, maybe Baba thought, because of my love for this body, father is a tilak is fine. Maybe from that I can draw. That was a new thing. Secondly, we always speak about Vikramajit. But here, I like that concept where Baba says it's transformation. Like whenever a king defeats somebody, that person dies or he's a prisoner or a slave and that prisoner or slave is dragged to his kingdom. So that the uh, order continues for me, the prisoner. But Baba here is saying, no, I don't want you to keep or defeat them then and make them your prisoner because when they continue being with you then they'll cause mischief so transform them that I liked everything how, is, how does um, last change to good wishes anger change to a tolerance power etc and all so I like that transformation so uh, that's a new word I learned instead of conquering wises let me transform. Good, good, good. Usha Ben seems to be wanting to say something. So Bhavi says the expansion of the whole knowledge is merged in the awareness of this three right. And then I liked uh, when Bhavi said that. In, um, then Baba compared it as a, as a weapon, and Baba says, if one of them, one arm of the trident is broken from the weapon, then it's not a trade, it cannot be used. That's lovely. Actually, so we have the threshold, so one of them, one of the arm is um, broken, then it's you know, really. Um, looking nice, it's not looking nice, and also it, it, it won't really function to the its full potential. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bhanuji wants to say something. Mm -hmm. But the tilak has to be indestructible. In, indelible ink is how we have to, you know, draw those tilak, uh, the other three dots of the tilak on our foreheads. Yeah. Every now and then it can't get erased. On a lighter note, you know, if you remember, there is, there was a ad, ad of Sindur, that there is some new Sindur that that doesn't come off. And I don't know if you remember that, 
somebody had sent it to me in which the husband dies you know and his the body is being brought and you know she's not crying you know everybody's crying and they're trying to make her cry and then the mother-in-law tries to erase that sindoor from her forehead and it just doesn't work and she's just sitting still and so now in a little bit of time the husband wakes up you know so he becomes alive again so you see the siddhu the power of that indelible siddhu and the person the husband doesn't die because of the siddhu that she's she has applied it was a very funny um, ad of siddhu but uh, now what we have to do is to create this indelible indestructible siddhu or tilak uh, for ourselves the tilak of awareness that then becomes a sindur for us. You know, Baba has many times said that Baba is our spouse. He is the uh, eternal beloved who, for us. We are the lovers and he will never die. Yeah. And so that, that all those tilaks have to become indelible, indestructible. Yeah. No dot should be missing, right? No dot should be missing. One dot missing. It's like one prong of the trident. Yes. Yes. Very nice. One prong of the trident is broken. Then. Okay. Shall we end now with some meditation? Unless someone else wants to say something. Let's go into meditation that. Yeah, let's see ourselves transforming our vices completely. Let's see our lust getting transformed into good wishes. Let's see our anger getting transformed into tolerance and spiritual strength and spiritual intoxication. Let's see the fire of anger turning into the fire of yoga in which all our sins are getting incinerated. Let's see our attachment transform into love. Let's see our greed getting transformed into trusty consciousness. We are a Above and beyond, there is unlimited disinterest. That there is no pull whatsoever towards anything, no temptation. Wanting has transformed into giving. We have become bestowers. Jaiye has transformed into jaiye, jaiye, go away, desires. And then our ego, our body consciousness is getting transformed to self-respect. As we conquer Maya, we become conquerors of the world. And here we have to make these five vices after conquering them, instead of making them into prisoners, you're making them into our supporters. Making them cooperative in our task of world transformation. And all this is possible through the three dots. The tilak. The dot that I am a soul. The dot the Shiv Bhava is the soul and the dot of the drama. Imperishable tilak on our foreheads of awareness of these three aspects. And see this tilak transforming into the tilak of success, tilak of victory. And eventually, in the golden age, this tilak is getting transformed into the tilak 
of world sovereignty. That okay, Rakhi, then. Om Shanti. Thank you, Baba. Thank you, Shaitan Bhai. Thank you, Divine Family. We meet tomorrow in continuation of this Moodly at 5 a.m. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Rakhi, Ben. Thank you, everybody.